They're the in crowd. We're the other ones. It's a different kind of cloth that we're cut from. We let our colors show where the numbers ain't. We're the paint where there ain't supposed to be paint. That's who we are. That's how we roll. The outsiders. The outsiders. They call Ontario Motor Speedway the Indianapolis of the West as this circuit nearly mirrors the shape and distance of that famed super speedway. But for all that track means to motorsports, this one might mean a lot to the NFR and League Cup Series drivers as 12 of them look to advance their way into the next round of the playoffs. From the southern part of California, this is the Ontario 500. Hello again everybody, I'm Colin Denton with RVN and welcome to the 21st race of the Elite Cup Series season at Ontario, a track we've been to before. Last time around it was in the middle of the regular season, this time it is in the playoffs, which carries a lot more significance because we got 12 drivers that are looking to advance their way into the round of eight. And after the last race at Simtel Park, Reese Butcher was able to steal it away from those drivers and no one has been able to claim their spot in the round of eight yet. And it is big for a lot of these drivers because... 5th back to 12th are separated by 20 points, so a good day here can go a long way. And by the way, we've got four Super Speedway winners in the field from this season. Amethyst Ashley, David Davidson, Julio Caesar, and Philip Fry, all Super Speedway winners. And they're hoping that they can make it two here today out of Ontario, but... It's going to be a long and grueling task because we know that there was a lot of issues with the pit entry last time around coming to this circuit. And hopefully, we're not going to see some of those same issues. But we will have to see. we got 40 laps to determine it. Taking a look at where we're coming from, Simtel Park. We'll be back in Wisconsin for our next race at Milwaukee Mile. But we head to Ontario for the second time. And for the second time, we're in California. Ontario just a few miles away from Fontana Auto Club Speedway and also from the former Riverside International Raceway. And this track has played host to numerous IndyCar and NASCAR races back in the 70s. We'll take a look at our test car on track so you get a feel for what it's like to drive around this circuit. Going down into turn number one, over 9,000 RPMs, you're going to be hitting that rev limiter. That tachometer is going to be blinking red almost every time you get to the end of the straightaway. Breathe the throttle through the corners into that short chute and then right back onto the back straightaway. And obviously the draft is going to be a major factor in this event. Maybe not as important in the truck series. Those trucks really punching a big hole in the air. These cars are a little bit more aerodynamic and they're not going to be punching as much of a hole. But you can definitely get an advantage getting somebody's slingshot going into these corners. You want to stay right down on the line. Going through turn four, it's a little bit different looking. We'll discuss that a little later in the broadcast, but definitely a lot of improvements made here at the racetrack, and that is a lap around Ontario Motor Speedway. And we'll see if the Elite Cup guys can manage it for 40 laps. Looking at our part-timer race, Shane Borland up in front alongside John Gilbert, who is going to slip back pretty quickly. As we mentioned, that outside line is not going to be the preferred line. It's going to be the inside, and that's exactly what drivers are using to make passes. There's Dwayne Calloway making his way by the two car of Robert Harrison. And it's going to be 75 of Kyle Wall who gets to the line first. And he will advance into the feature along with Borland. Dwayne Calloway, Chris Harley, Austin Rogers, and Craig Martin will all make the show. Spark is Sun Devil just on the outside. 
along with Connor Mays, Kenny Knox, Donnie Moore. All inside the top 10, but unable to make the field. Gilbert dropping all the way back to 13th after starting on the front row. Our hot seat driver of the race is Jake Baskinger. Great playoff so far, a runner-up at Texas World. Only weak spot, Toronto Lakeshore, but still, all four races, these playoffs inside the top 20, so definitely a contender. And he's going to try to stay up in the points. He's currently fourth at the moment as we take a look at those standings. John Arndt at the top, Philip Fry at the back, but realistically, there is so little separation between those drivers at the cut line. Fifth through 12, separated by 20 points. One wrong move in today's race, and you can find yourself at the back. Who will take the victory, though? Will it be a playoff driver? Time to find out. Let's go trackside for pre-race festivities. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, leader of the famed Alabama gang, Bobby Allison. Crank them engines. Two-time Ontario winner Bobby Allison on the command. Now time to take a look at the starting grid. Starting on pole is Allison Rain in the number six Victoria's Secret Ford. First pole of the season, second in her career. And Craig Martin in the number 38 loves Ford. Barely got in through the heat race but laid down a big lap just like Colin Murphy did in the truck race. Row number two has the NASCAR winner Jack Krause and David Davidson, the highest playoff driver on the grid. In row three, Mitchell Mark broke his four-race streak outside the top 20, finishing 11th last race, and Philip Fry, three top 10s on super speedways for the chase contender. Two more playoff drivers in row four, Jack Porkins, three straight top 15s, and Bernard DeBarro, seven straight top 20s. Rounding out the top 10, Noah Cars, two top 20 finishes on super speedways this season, and Dale Jr. fan 88-83, runner-up at Zen Joltis. In row six, Chris Harley has an amateur cup victory at Pigs Cliff, and Eric Monaco, two top 10s coming on tracks two-plus miles in length. Row 7 has Chaser, Amethyst Ashley, top full-timer on Super Speedways with a victory at Pigs Cliff and Stephen Willey, high on momentum after back-to-back -back top three finishes. Row 8 has the bump draft and runner-up Tyler Markell alongside Reese Butcher, three-time winner after his victory at Simtel Park. In row 9, Austin Rogers, three amateur cup top 20s on Super Speedways and the other JR, best Super Speedway finish is 17th. Just inside the top 20, Chaser Adam Mundinger has two top 20s on Super Speedways and Eli Bright, best Super Speedway finishes 19th. Two more chasers in row 11. William Brock finished sixth at Simtel Park. Stuart Grattan has two super speedway top fives. In row 12, it's Nick Smith has two top fives at Zen Joltis, and Cody Hagen, the final practice leader, has finished outside the top 30 three times at super speedways. A couple of super speedway winners in row 13. Kyle Wall won the amateur cup race at Bump Drafton, and Rampage won this event last season. Row 14, chaser Jake Baskinger working back to back top tens, and Brad Stover, the runner up at Pigs Cliff. Row 15, Noah Ponser, his best season finish of 6th came at 8 Bowl, and Gerard Irwan has one Super Speedway top 20. The season opening winner, Julio Caesar, inside of row 16 alongside Shane Borland, who has three top 10s on Super Speedways between this series and the Amateur Cup. Row 17 has Dwayne Calloway, got a 6th place finish at Picks Cliff, and Ryan Baden, no top 30 finish since his Peoria win. Current points leader, John Arndt on the inside of row 18. No top 10s on Super Speedway, six top 20s in 10 races, though. Jonathan Reigns, alongside, finished eighth at Pigs Cliff. Row 19 consists of Aiden Shepard, two Super Speedway top 10s, and Rambo, who's finished 27th in the last two races. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. in row 20 has the worst average finish among full-timers on this track type, and Dominic Carranza finished eighth at Columbia. And in the final row, it's NASCAR Fan 19, two runner-up finishes on Super Speedways for the Chaser and Caleb Campbell, two top tens on this track type. As mentioned, this is the first poll of the season for Allison Reigns, so that makes 21 different poll winners on the season. We'll hopefully see a lot of them at our Clash event next season. But right now, these 42 drivers are focused on Ontario. And we now have our 12 playoff drivers onboard cameras activated over on the NFR Next channel. Head over there and you can watch this entire race from onboard your favorite driver. That's going to be an intense one. 40 laps around this two and a half mile circuit. Waiting on the green flag and there it goes. We are live here for race 21 on the Elite Cup Series season.
revealed exactly what these drivers feared about this racetrack is happening to Philip Fry right now as he's on the high outside through these corners and look at him getting past right now. He started up in the top 10 and he is sliding backwards in a hurry. The way they started the race, he was only a point back of the cut line. Now he is 22 points back of the cut line. So right away, he's going to have some work to do if he wants to get back into contention. Allison Rain led the first lap, but Craig Martin immediately shoots through in turn one, grabs the lead, and Jack Porkins making contact with the outside wall. That was a pretty heavy shot. And right there, a bold move by Asher to get by Noah Cars, and now trying to take advantage of the 0-4, getting in the wall, losing that momentum down the backstretch. But at the moment, she has no drafting help as the 44 stays with the 0-4. And it looks like she's going to have the advantage going down into the corner. The 04 just lost too much speed going through that short shoot. But that's going to be a cause for concern for the 04 car. But it doesn't look like it's going to cost him too much as now he slots in the line. The front group seems like they've gone single file while the back group is a little bit more double file. The truck race was a little bit more packed up. But like we said, the draft is going to be a little bit different between these different race cars. Adam Mundinger trying to work his way. He's behind a couple of cars at the same time. Oh, big shot there. Chris Harley and then Amethyst Ashley right behind him. And Jack Borkins will go back to that spot. And Bruno De Barros, Ashley's teammate, is going to take over another spot. And here comes William Brock. Ashley just getting passed all over the left side by several playoff drivers. As now the 57 has a little bit of damage from hitting the outside wall. So now we thought that turn four was going to be a little bit of a calamity corner, but looks like coming off of turn one, going into that chute, that might be the issue. As now Ashley is on the high outside, and there's a crash in front of her, Nick Smith and Austin Rogers. And the 18 catches a little bit of air, but he's going to drive away as the 10 of Austin Rogers comes to a stop up against the wall. And the leaders will take the caution. Craig Martin apparently out in front. So all of our cautions the last time we were here came as a result of drivers trying to merge on the pit lane, but we finally have a caution where it is not the pit lane that causes the issue. It looks like it was a move going down into turn four. We'll take a look at the replay, but from the looks of it, it looked like the 10 was trying to make a move on the 18, and it did not work out, and so it's going to be an early end to the day for Austin Rogers. As he awaits some assistance from wrecker and the medical crew but these drivers now at pace speed for the first time today truck series went caution free through their 20 lap event and only three laps into this one and we've had an incident and we will see if they try to go for a pit stop here a little bit of an old surface so wouldn't be surprised and it looks like we're seeing a lot of cars starting to duck down toward the apron. So I imagine we're going to see pretty much everyone in here, and they're going to more than likely take four tires. Like I said, it's an older surface. More than likely going to be a lot of tire wear. Tires will be a necessity here, so if we get cautions at the right periods, then should expect to see four tire changes, and we will see if we get any green flag stops today. But here they come now down the pits, and we saw a little bit of position shuffling, especially Phil Fry dropping way back in the field, so not necessarily going to see everyone pitting at the exact same time as seeing the first car pull into their stall. Very long pit lane here. Watching on William Brock, Jack Porkins, and David Davidson going to pull in pretty similar times. And Brock's going to go for four tires, and they're setting up tires for the other crews, so should see four tires across the board here. Oh, and I'm seeing some contact on the middle of pit lane. Several hits for Jake Baskinker, another one coming from Cody Hagen. The 84 has taken several shots. Had a good vantage point from up here in the tower. It looked like he got released, and then someone else coming in. Striking him, and then there were several other cars that made contact with the 84 before he got off pit lane. As we see the race off pit road, Craig Martin retains the lead. Allison Rain lost a couple spots, but four tires across the board. 
We take a look at the replay of this accident, and yep, it's Austin Rogers making a move down to the inside in turn four. Makes contact with Nick Smith. And the 18, big hit on the back side of the race car, gets him airborne. And Austin Rogers sliding into his left rear tire right up against the windscreen. And so that contact is going to disable Rogers' car as Nick Smith actually able to pull away. And so it looks like he's going to be able to continue in this race, although he's definitely not going to be up to a competitive speed. So let's take a look at what happened here on pit lane. Now that we have a better look at it. 84 pulls away and Rampage is coming into a stall at that point and then drives right into Kyle Law and Cody Hagen also trying to get into a stall along with Nick Smith. That was just a big mess right there as the 84 tried to exit. Well, right on board. He's our hot seat driver. Look at what it looks like from inside his car. Big news for a driver who hasn't finished outside the top 20 in these playoffs. Hey, I'm just going to take it for a spin. Yeah, okay, sure, Dale. Hey, I won't start. It's a hand scanner, Dale, remember? Can't be too careful. What's going on? Dad? I just wanted to test drive. Unbelievable. Is that a no? Well, let's have a little history lesson on this racetrack, taking a look back to last year's highlights, and really the highlights were this turn four entry on the pit lane. All of the incidents were taking place as the drivers were trying to merge down and get their green flag service, and it just caused a mass amount of chaos. Took out multiple drivers. And so there have been improvements to how they enter pit lane now. You can see they've got more of an apron there will merge down into what is more of a drag strip now. This is a multi-use facility. I'll have a little bit more of a padding to enter pit lane, get down to speed. And that should hopefully cause a lot less issues if drivers need to make a green flag stop. But our first caution comes out in turn four for a non-pit issue as Austin Rogers now drops out of the event after contact with Nick Smith. And he takes a heavy hit into the outside wall. Green flag back out. Craig Martin gets a good jump, but someone did not get a good jump, and that would be the 84 car of Jake Baskinger, and as we expected, big contact on pit lane, and he did not come back down for a second stop, so he is running with the damage that he incurred from that hit, and as you'd expect, it's holding everyone up as he's trying to get out of the way. Certainly has the awareness that his car is not up to full speed, but still going to cause some issues with John Arndt, now the first car right behind him and boxed in by everyone else at the back of this field. The 05 is not going to appreciate that one. Came in as the points leader, now ducking down to the inside, trying to get back with the pack. Even the 18 who was involved in that first incident was able to get away from the 84, taking that big shot really off the back end of the 75 of Kyle Wall. That's what really did his front end in. And we're now seeing the 57 coming down the pit lane under green and we're hearing it is a passing penalty on the restart and I would have to imagine it's because of the 84. We're taking a look at the onboard now and yeah she just dives right underneath the three and then passes several more cars and everyone just trapped on the outside with Jake Baskinger trying to get up to speed and not happening. What I'm really surprised about though is that she's the only one getting penalized when there were definitely some more cars going with her and I would have to imagine that the rule book states that if you pass on the inside of the car directly in front of you, that would be the penalty, but several cars followed Ashley, not past her, and so they are going to be fine and got an advantage off of basking or being slow while Ashley would be the one that gets penalized. Oh, and back in turn four, another incident. This time it's Julio Caesar. And a second accident here is Zachary Fitzwater Sr. up in the air. And more cars going to drive into it. Kyle Law, the other JR. Among those getting contact is now the nine car stalled out in the middle of the track. The big story here, the zero of Julio Caesar. 
playoff contender. He's definitely going to have some damage, but it doesn't look as severe as the cars in front of him. The other JR really plowed into a stalled race car. I believe it was the 9, or maybe he got into the back of the 75. Going to have to look at the replay on that again. Unfortunately, Fitzwater was just driving by that accident and then suddenly saw him turning into the outside wall. I believe Dale Jr. fan 88-83 and Jonathan Reigns were also involved in that. And there's Noah Cars, I believe. That was the other car that was spinning with Caesar. So he's got some damage. And then I believe he also made contact in that second portion of the wreck. Yeah, you can see he's got damage on both sides of his race car. Have to see if he can get that fixed up, if he can get back into the field, or else he's going to have to go behind the wall. So back down the pace speed for the second time today. That's Craig Martin still leading here at Ontario. He'll lead this whole group back in the pit lane. Once again, everyone coming down for service. Let's look at a couple different drivers. Brock working his way up the field. Davidson, as well as Mundinger. Brock going to hit his stall first. Yeah, it's going to be four tires for Brock. Mundinger at his stall and tires at the ready. Looks like it's going to be four for him and would imagine for pretty much everyone else in the field as well. We're in a couple laps on their green and certainly can get the benefits of those good years on your race car. And once again, it's going to be a 38 that gets off pit lane first. Looks like a little bit less drama. And the front four actually maintain their position as Tyler Markell drops a couple spots to DeBarros and Mundinger. You like right jumping up three spots. So let's take a look at this incident. And I believe there was a little bit of contact there between Mundinger and DeBarros, but it's the contact between Caesar and Cars. Pretty much similar to what we saw before with Rogers and Smith. Only this time, Caesar's going to strike the wall first and cars a little bit further down the racetrack. And then as these cars are trying to avoid the incident, as I believe Mundinger might have sideswiped the 44. Yep, there's Reigns and Dale Jr. fan 80-83 making contact and they go out of frame, but did see how that incident started, the 77 and 76 making contact. There's that hit at full speed, and then we'll see 76 is already down in the apron, 77 trying to get lower to avoid the incident. And unfortunately, Fitzwater Sr., we mentioned, he has the worst average finish at super speedways, and it's only going to get worse as he takes a heavy shot into the outside wall. No fault of his own, just caught in the wrong place at the wrong time once again. Riding on his side. This is not the first time that he's had a wild ride at a super speedway. I can remember back to 8 Bowl. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he ran into the roof of Jake Baskinger. And this time he is going for a flip. And I believe we're going to see Noah Cars as his car is a little bit hard of steering. He's going to strike the 9 while it's still airborne. And then the 75... And the 98 are committed to the high side, thinking that the wreck is going to go low, and 75 is going to hit Fitzwater. And then the other JR runs into the back of the wall, and that's where he gets all his damage. As we see Dwayne Callaway just barely breaking as the 44 comes to a near rest in front of him. Riding on board, Caesar. <laughs> Second caution coming out only about a quarter of the way through this event at Ontario. I'm really proud to be a part of it. Love, it's pretty amazing. 
Her name is Amanda Brookman, and she is my destiny. Although she may not know that, per se. So you can go online and make any kind of car you want. I made a love car. Do I think they stand a chance? I mean, who doesn't love love? I love love. What will you design? ToyotaRacing.com Who? So we showed you the pit lane chaos that was last year's race at Ontario, but how about the circumstances that led to Rampage's first victory? Gabriel Wanderly had the lead, but he decided that he was not going to make it to the checkered flag even as they ran and finished under caution. So he came down for service, the one stayed out, and he was able to claim his first career victory that led on to a title in Season 1. However, it is not going to be a repeat this season, for the title at least, as he is already out of the playoffs, as you can see. A terrible stretch, seven times outside the top 20 in the past seven races. Allison ranks a little bit worse at the moment out of the playoffs in the first round as well. I don't think either of those drivers though are going to catch Stephen Willey in his terrible regular season. We see the drivers out of the race now. The other JR, Jonathan Reigns, Kyle Law, and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. will all not return to this race. But we go back to green flag racing, and you can actually see that the 34 of Jed Krause is out in front. We had to go back and look, and I believe it was in the corner of the screen, but he was actually coming in the pit lane in front of that accident. He was able to get his four tires changed and get back on the racetrack and not have to pit, so he grabbed the lead. And supposedly he was reporting a vibration, which would make sense because he had just come in that caution prior and gotten four tires, and he was still up there near the front of the field, but he caught a little bit of a lucky break with the fact that they crashed right behind him. He was able to go ahead and take the lead instead of lose all that track time. But it looks like that's going to be short-lived as the 38 pushes down to the inside. And he overdrives the corner. See the 34 way outside as William Brock tries to take the lead over. 38 dove it a little too deep and he went up the racetrack. And that opened the door for the 23 of William Brock trying to lead a lap here and grab a bonus point. And it looks like that's going to be right in hand. You know, he's got a big draft coming with his inside. If he's smart, he's going to change lanes here, but maybe not. He's going to have enough time to arc the corner and maintain a lead over Mitchell Mark as now the 57 back down pit lane. And we're hearing that she did not take tires during that last caution. That just does not make any sense. She was able to stay on the lead lap despite the penalty, but now that 57 crew is just going to waste even more time coming down for that service. Now it's just inexplicable mistake there by that crew as now the five diving down to the inside of Brock and Mark takes over the lead with one fell swoop through turn three and so Brock will go back to second place but he leads the lap gets the point so that's all he really needs there obviously he wants to go for that victory but he's at least got one more point in his bucket as Ashley now pulling off fifth lane, but it seems almost inevitable that she's going to go a lap down, and you just can't excuse that. Just take your tires when the opportunity presents itself. You caught a bad break there with the cars all stacked up, took your penalty, still stayed on the lead lap, but now you just gave it all away there by not taking tires, and you got to hand that to the crew in terms of making that mistake. You see William Brock trying to work his way back toward the five. Takes a little bit of a lower arc into the corner. Right now the 57 still out in front of these leaders, but just barely. She's gonna have to hope for a caution right now because they are charging. They've still got full speed, hot tires. Front three lined up in a row, right behind Ashley, and another three coming from behind, and here comes Mark to the inside. Brock even looking a little bit lower thinking about a move but three wide in the turn one just does not sound like a good time and it looks like all three of those drivers will clear Ashley getting out of the corner contact from Mark into the wall and Brock makes contact with Mark and he goes for a slide way up the racetrack and Davidson shoots to the lead well I thought the 57 was going to play a factor into that but apparently she might have because Mark seems to have made a misjudgment coming off the corner and the 23 was expecting that the 5 was going to hit his marks. 
and unfortunately the 23 shoots right into the 5, goes for a big slide and right up the racetrack, and now the 11 takes advantage, and he's going to lead a lap and get a bonus point. 11 second in points, at least the last time they came through, as I believe Martin just got a little loose off the floor and made contact with the wall. He's sliding backwards. Davidson, the Zen Joltis winner, but this hasn't been a track type particularly well to him. Three times he's finished on super speedways, 33rd or worse. Hoping that this is going to end up being one of the better ones for him as DeBarros tries to make a charge. He's going to want that bonus point as well as he is 20 points above the cut line right now. And just looking at the cut line, Jubio Caesar, three points above, had that accident that brought out that last caution. He's still on the racetrack though. And he's going to hope that there's a lot of cars that drop out so he can continue to gain some points. Mundinger can still gain ground. He's up in the ninth position. Baskinger with a bit of damage that's going to slow him up. As Mitchell Mark is now slid behind NASCAR Fan 19. You see that Ashley is still fighting to get back on the lead lap. Oh, a slide off the corner. Reese Butcher way down on the racetrack. And now contact into the wall. Dominic Carranza sideways. There goes Allison Rain and Eli Bright right in front of the field. Spin by Chris Harley. One car also involved. Oh, Nick Smith plows into the back of the one car. And a chain reaction there. 18 car now in smoke. He was the last one to arrive on the scene. Saw the 90 way down the racetrack. Coming off of turn four. And I believe the 24 was the first car I saw sideways. Rain also caught up in that one. Pole sitter of the event. Now she's got some damage. Rampage trying to catch back up to speed. I don't believe they took the caution, so that's why they're racing back around to the line. Definitely the leaders racing back for position. There's Harley. If he went off the front end of Shane Borland. A lot of cars scramble to find position and get away from that accident. There's that 25. He didn't take too much damage. Just trying to eyeball it. Eli Bright, though, we did see him sideways make some contact. Looks like he has a little bit of front end damage. Evaluate that replay and see exactly what happened there. It just seems like the 90 went for a slide. He's butchered did. And I believe he might have gotten away unscathed from that whole incident. I think it was a 24. Maybe he was also sideways and came up the track a little bit too much. And that ended up putting him and a lot of others in the wall. As we see a lot of cars coming down, I see the 78 of Philip Fry is staying out on the racing surface. So it looks like he is not going to stop here. Which is an interesting play, but it looks like it might be a strategic one. Try to get a bonus point. an eye on several of our drivers up near the front of the field. NASCAR Fan 19 first doing to his stall. And going to take four tires. This is the longest green flag stint we've had so far this race. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see four tires taken here. Especially because they've been taking four tires for the first two stops when those stints were a lot less intensive. Seeing Gradden and Davidson getting ready to go for four tires. 64 already pulls away. He was Starting at the back of the field, so he had one of the first pit stalls. He's made up a good bit of ground so far this race. And he needed it. He was right at the cut line. Oh, and at the front of the field, Davidson makes contact with Rain. The six was trying to get into her stall at the front of the field. Davidson was already pulling away. And that could be a big factor on Davidson, who actually got out in front on the field. 
He came in first and he left first, but he had contact with Rain on his way out. So let's take a look at this replay first. And yeah, so Butcher made contact with Carranza. They went for a big slide off of corner number four. And they correct it. But unfortunately, Callaway comes in and makes contact with Carranza. Rain squeezed into the outside. Bright runs into the back of the 24, makes contact with Butcher, so he did have some contact on that whole incident. Stephen Willie squeezed in there at the back. Uh, Rain comes around and gets Borland, so the 25 gets the three as a result. And the one trying to come to a complete stop, trying to avoid. As Noah Carr slips through, I believe the 76 might, as, might have as well, as well as Maiden Hagen there on the bottom. But then here comes Smith with a lot of speed, already damaged and right into the back of Rampage and a little bit into Rain as well. And we saw the smoke coming out of the 18 car, so it looks like his day is going to be done. Riding on board, Julio Caesar, as he rides through this one. Third caution of the day here at Ontario. Where's the queue? Allison, where's the queue? Upper left. Next to the W. Oh. Thanks. 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 What's happened to me? It's funny that you right. You're loving me now, see? To be a grueling. If you are not currently involved in the NFRN and would like to get involved in the late stages of this season, link down in the description. You can sign up for our part time truck series qualifying you are not already signed up for it or involved in one of our full-time series. Deadline for race number 14, two days away. We return to Ontario Motor Speedway on lap 24 when the green flag comes out. Nick Smith, the only driver to drop out of the race after that accident. Everyone else that was involved is still in it. They just might have a little damage to go along with their machine. David Davidson takes the green flag. Philip Fry did lead a lap, then came down for pit service. So grabs a bonus point, but as you can see, he's still bottom of the chart, 36 points behind. So it's going to be a big uphill task for him to get back into contention here. And you can see Davidson struggling to clear Ashley as the 57 gets out in front. So now she's technically back on the lead lap, and that allows Martin to go down and take the lead over. So once again, Ashley causing some havoc as she fights to get back on the lead lap, which she has plenty of right to do, but certainly a situation that could have been avoided if she had just gotten the tires when she had the opportunity to. And trouble back in turn three. Steven Willie up on his side. Chris Harley also involved. And the caution has not come out. I am very surprised by that. The 62 is fully on his side, going on the wall. And we're going to stay green. I guess no one technically went around, but the 62 caught some major air there. And let's look back at that one. So the 62's on the high outside. No grip in that groove. Three comes in with a big slide. Nails him in the left rear. 62 hits the wall. He is upside down. 
scraping against the catch fence, the wall, grinding Sparks against the pavement. And he'll get back on all four tires, but they continue, and they don't call a caution flag for that. I get it. No one necessarily went around, but that was a pretty gnarly situation. And either way, they're going to continue racing. Craig Martin now out in front to Barrows in second, looking to make a move to the inside as Brad Stover has moved up in the third place. Here comes the 12 car to the inside for the move. And he's going to clear the 38. Is the 55 going to try to take a look? He's not going to get the lead, but he is going to get second from Martin. It's David Davidson trying to peek his way back in there. Pretty big separation between these front three. Carlos has a big gap up at the front, hoping that he can lead his first laps of the race. He grab a crucial bonus point. Still 20 points up on the cut line. There's still a big stack up in the middle of this group. You know, Brock leading that charge as he's in eighth place at the moment. That is one spot behind where he finished here last season. Actually, now that we're updating the leaderboard, he's in six, so one spot ahead of where he finished one season ago. But now we see a run and contact from Reese Butcher. A run got by cleanly. Butcher did not as he was trying to make a move to the inside. Now John Arndt shoots his way to the inside of Jack Porkins, who's on the outside line. The four is really struggling at this moment in time as his teammate goes by on the inside as well. That's not going to fare any better going down in this next corner. He continues to be on the outside. His teammate joins him, but I don't know if that was necessarily the best move. Outside, definitely not where you want to be on this track, and the 29 trying to help his teammate is going to regret that decision. All in contact into the wall, Jake Baskinger, Stephen Willey. Well, he just had the incident back in that corner, and now he's had another one this time with Jake Baskinger. That looked like more of a wall scrape, so understandably not necessarily a caution needed for that one, but we remain green once again as both of those cars try to get back up to full speed. Baskinger already having a rough day with that pit lane contact, just one point above the cut line, and now a problem in turn two, Mitchell Mark and Ryan Maiden. And Gradden caught a piece of the five car. Looks like everyone else is going to get away with it. The 76 almost ran into the back of 99 as he tried to get straightened out, but looks like it's going to be primarily a two-car incident, perhaps three if you want to count Gradden in that, because it looks like he sideswiped the five car as he was coming through. Now a big tire mark on the side of the five's door. So try to come around and grab the caution flag. time that's come out. Could have easily been the fifth. And it's DeBarles that's out in front. So he will have the advantage going down in the pit lane. Getting into the late stages of this race and this caution comes at a pretty precarious time. At least as we look into the fuel window. Obviously we haven't had enough of a long run to really determine what that fuel window is, but if we're going based on practice laps, it seems like we're kind of right on the edge of that window where you might be able to make it, you might not. We'll see what the fuel economy is. And if any of these teams try to gamble with something, you can say this, they're more than likely going to come down now because you pretty much have to. You're not going to make it based on the last stop. Let's see if they can get these tanks filled. All the leaders coming in. We'll see if anyone's going to hang out there. And the 04 is still out on the track. So Porkins is opting to go for a lead lap. He does not have one so far this race. So he'll opt for a bonus point. 
as we watch the borrows Brock and Gradden take their service. Gradden navigating some traffic as Brock is first to reach his stall among those that were watching. And it looks like we're going for some split strategy here. I say split, it looks like a lot of them are going for two tires. That's the case for Brock. He's going two rights. And it looks like the Barros is going for rights. Gradden is going for rights. The 12 car took a long time. He's not going to be the first car off of pit lane. I wonder if he was trying to fill his fuel cell a little bit more. Just maybe not enough that it necessitated a four tire stop. As we look at the race off pit lane, Brock five spots up, and DeBarro loses four. Campbell went for four tires. That's interesting. He'll lose five spots in the process. Let's look back on that Baskinger Willie incident. It looks like 62 goes in deep on the 84, and obviously both cars having damage at this rate as the one car shoots by on the inside. Not quite as dramatic as Willie just had a few laps earlier as they just scraped the wall, but. A little bit of contact is going to cause him a little bit more sheet metal damage. And they grind it all the way to the exit of the corner. And 62 a little bit more. It's the 84 trying to find a lane to shoot by. That's what it looks like on board of Baskinger. Can't imagine he appreciated it that much. Now let's take a look at what brought out our caution and the five really deep and makes just kind of a move that probably was never going to work. And he'll hit Maiden in the left rear. They will both back into the turn two wall. 99 catches a lot more air than the five does, even though both do. And looks pretty reminiscent of what Willie just did in turn three. Except this time, you definitely have a car facing backwards, so that will bring out the caution this time. And then we're going to see Gryden come in the shot as the 5 is just kind of trying to save the car. Not entirely in control here as the 29 sideswipes him. And that will send him back around. Not sure what kind of damage Gryden got because we were watching his pit stop, and it didn't look like he really spent that much time doing any damage repair, so... He might be fine, but it's the four caution of the day here in Ontario. Hopefully our final restart coming up. See, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. It felt good to be out of the rain. Four-speed manual transmission, 850 horsepower, one bucket seat. Zero to 160 in eight seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. That baby will do. Any questions? I take it for a test drive. You ever driven one of these things? I'll get the keys. She don't take keys. Back in Ontario, where we'll have eight laps to go when we hit the green flag. None of the drivers in that last accident dropped out of the race. However, the 76 of Dale Jr. Fan 8883 did. It looked like he had a mechanical failure. However, remember, he did have some involvement in the second caution of the day. Jack Porkins stayed out, led a lap, then pitted. So now Brad Stover is leading this race. As Porkins fades to the back of the field, he is below the cut line at the moment. We'll see if he's able to gain points and then put himself back in the green. Jake Baskinger on the inside, hoping that he won't be put out as he has a wounded race car. Stover gets a good jump as Ashley holding up the traffic. He restarted single file and Martin looking to the inside of Brock. Trying to take over second spot. And they go side by side. Brock is able to maintain the momentum. That is something we have not seen on the outside line. He's able to hold down second place. Davidson looked at that line and decided he might want to have a shot at it. Not getting challenged from the inside yet. 
Laps are winding down and Stover now onto a big lead. One of the biggest we've seen all day for a driver who is outside of the playoffs but trying to fight for the 17th position and possibly rookie of the year. Big jumble up here as DeBarro is stuck on the outside. Now getting passed by Monaco on the inside. NASCAR Fan 19 able to shoot by both of them since the lap started. So 64 working his way up as he is in cut line danger. Suddenly it seems like turn three has momentum on the outside as I saw Tyler Markell making a move to the inside of DeBarros, but all of a sudden the 12 car just shot forward and maintained that position. Something to keep an eye on as these laps wind down. Still a big pack near the back of the field. Cut line down to two points as Corkin's trying to work his positions up. See Gradden starting to fall back. He's only eight points above the cut line and he's losing points and positions as he goes along. Now the six car underneath. And a wand right on his back. And there's Julio Caesar trying to limp his wounded race car home. 13 points above the cut line. Here's a move from Ashley on Stover to try to get back on the lead lap. At this rate, I believe that a caution would negate any advantage of being back on the lead lap. So that was a big advantage for William Brock trying to get past Stover. Because the 55 had a big lead there. Now Ashley has forced him back toward the 23 car. And the 55 is going to try to get right back to her. Not able to complete the move. Riding on board Brock. He's looking for an opportunity to pounce. Got the victory at Riki. And that's a track that's not necessarily classified as a super speedway, but for the racing that it provides, it kind of operates like one. And he's using the experience he got there in trying to make a move toward the front and get victory number two and one that will advance him into the next round of the playoffs. Side by side for turn three and contact Stover made the move Ashley had to get out of the gas and Brock door slams her and that will force the 57 out of the way as Martin trying to get by her she runs in the third position her teammate DeBarro is back and forth still a long ways to go for him has four laps to go in this race the one thing that's missing for Stover this season is a victory. Four top fives, eight top tens. Things just kind of went sideways when it came to getting into the playoffs. And amazingly, this is his worst track type. 25.6 average finish on the super speedways. He was a runner-up at Pigs Cliff, but all the other finishes, really not that impressive. So to come up through this field and lead laps looking for that victory, this could be a big day for this driver. Continuing to trail behind him. And we're seeing the 57 coming down the pit lane. And a couple cars trailing her. This could be a sign that they're not going to make it on fuel. I believe I saw Caranza sliding once again. But that was Monaco and Kraus that were coming down. So no playoff drivers. But with three laps to go, this is going to be a concern for these drivers. Trying to make it to the end of the race on their fuel cell. And I wonder if this plays into Jack Porkins' hands as he just goes above the cut line. He pitted latest. So he got the bonus point, but he also might have a full fuel cell. We see Martin working on the inside of Brock. Trying to make that move. Not going to happen. Well, Brock is still high, so Martin's going to make the move. Big time move there. Coming off the corner. And the 38 in the second place. And Stover coming to pit lane. All of the leaders coming to pit lane. That's at least the top four. And I believe that is Ponser. That is first. That is still out. Followed by Butcher and Callaway. So with two laps to go, a lot of playoff drivers in the pits. Concerned that their cars are going to sputter while they're out on track. There is Stover in. I see NASCAR fan 19. Brock, DeBarros, Davidson, Gratton, and 
Porkins is also in there. I'm very surprised to see the 04. I figured by staying out and having a little bit of a later pit stop, he would have more fuel than the rest of the field, but apparently not the case, or at least they're very concerned that they're not going to make it or slow down on the track. So that's a look at the drivers that had to come down for service. Mundinger is the first playoff driver in fifth, but he's not in this main group up here in front. And it does not look like any of these top four are coming down for service. So Noah Ponser in line for potentially his first victory. But Reese Butcher trying to get his fourth and back to back. White flag is out. 92 in the lead, 90 chasing. Here comes Campbell trying to make a move to the inside on Butcher. They're going to go by the 04. He's going to go lap down. Campbell can't complete the pass, and Butcher is gaining ground on the 92. If Butcher were to win back-to-back -back races, that would be the first time in the League Cup Series history. Not in the league's history. Kyle Law did in an amateur. But if he's going to make a move, he has to do it down in the turn three, or else he's not going to have the chance. Here comes Caleb Campbell to the inside. And the 90 has to get out of the gas. And that opens the door for the 92. Campbell's going to pass Butcher. So is Callaway. But coming off a of turn number four, the fuel is going to hang for Ponser. A maiden victory in the Elite Cup Series here at Ontario. And the zero car up in smoke. It looks like he came down for a pit stop, but now he has smoke billowing out of the car. And that's a huge development. That's going to be a lot of lost points there. He's going to limp it back home. He had problems earlier in the day. But for Noah Ponser, it's win number one in the Elite Cup Series. This is, in fact, his first top five in the series. It seemed like he had a decent chance to go for a victory, possibly at Simtel Park. That did not pan out, but today it all went his way. As he goes to victory lane, Caleb Campbell will end up in the second position. That's a career best finish for him. Dwayne Calloway able to swipe away third as Butcher had to get out of the gas, just didn't have the momentum there. He'll end up fourth, and Adam Mundinger ends up in the fifth position. He's able to have his gas last all the way. Philip Fry got a bonus point and then ended up in the seventh position. That's a good chance for him to advance. And John Arndt didn't really talk about him all day. He was kind of silent, slowest in the final practice, but he got the ninth position today, and that's all he needed to hopefully pad his way into the next round. Looking at the next page, I'm very surprised to see Jake Baskinger finishing in 15th position after the pit lane problems on the first caution. Looks like he was able to keep his gas going to the finish line. Brad Stover, a heartbreak for him. Looks like he was on his way to his first victory, and he'll end up in the 16th position after having to pit late. William Brock, NASCAR Fan 19, will finish inside the top 20, but they had to pit in the last laps of the race. Also pitting were Dave Barros, Gradden, and Davidson. They will finish outside the top 20. Dave Barros and Davidson really had a chance to go for a victory there. Did not work out for them. And then, even further back, Julio Caesar, smoking car on the last lap of the race. Looks like he had just come off of pit lane. And you gotta remember, he did have that damage earlier on, so it looks like it was just a mechanical problem just as he came off pit lane. And he still crossed the line, so he is registered for a finish. Jack Porkins did fall a lap down. Amit Sassley two laps down after falling a lap down earlier and taking that late pit stop. And obviously this race featured a lot of attrition. No drivers dropped out of the Truck Series race. No cautions, no accidents. This one had four cautions with seven drivers dropping out. None of them were in the chase. But speaking of the playoffs, let's take a look at how those points look now after that chaos that happened at the end. John Arndt managed to keep that points lead. 10 points over William Brock and 32 points above the cut line, which now has David Davidson above Stuart Gratton. NASCAR Fan 19 was already outside the cut line and he'll remain there. Jack Porkins fell out while Adam Mundinger and Philip Fry worked their way into the playoff pitcher. But you take a look at 4th through 11th, there is no safe margin there 
when you head to Milwaukee Mile, you're going to have to be absolutely perfect to ensure that you're going to be in the next round as Baskinger, Brock, and Arndt feeling a little bit more comfortable. And Ashley was already one point below, and with that poor finish today, she'll be at the back of the field. We'll show you the points for the drivers that are already eliminated from the playoffs, and it should come as no surprise that the driver that was able to avoid trouble today and finished in the fourth position, Reese Butcher, continues to extend his gap over the other three drivers eliminated in round one. Outside of the playoffs, it's still Stover at 17th position, but instead of Jack Krause one point out, it's Aiden Shepard, as he'll slot into 18th. Krause, a little bit further back in the field, will be 19th in points now. Meanwhile, Noah Ponser's victory skyrockets him from 27th to 22nd in the points. And further back in the standings, unfortunately, Stephen Woolley has fallen off the page. That includes the rest of the full-timers. If I was Zachary Fitzwater Sr., I'd be a little concerned that Dwayne Calloway is getting pretty close. You have to remember, after his victory at Twin Ring Motegi, Calloway was 10th in points, and clearly he hasn't lost that luster, but it doesn't fare well for those full-timers. They've still got five more races in the season to make sure they finish at least 36th in the points. No changes in the team standings. AMI Incorporated still out in front. Just a little bit of gap widening and closing. And in the Rookie of the Year standings, it is still Brad Stover out in front by three points on Jack Krause. Really the only big jump that was notable in the front of the field was Phil Fry gaining 10 points with his top 10 performance here today. So that is going to do it for our races here at Ontario. A lot more exciting and action-packed than we saw in the Truck Series. Probably a little bit more than we bargained for, but it still produced a great finish with Noah Ponser going to victory lane for the first time in his career. The next time you'll see us on track, it'll be the Elite, Amateur, and Open Modified Series at Milwaukee Mile. For NFR and NRVN, my name is Colin Denton. We will see you all next time.